Hey, this is Trout Bitten Tips. Thanks for joining me. Today, let's talk about the Dorsey Yarn Indicator. This is my favorite indie by far because there's nothing else like it. It's just yarn and a tiny rubber band. So it's super light, super sensitive, uh, really versatile. You can slide it up and down the leader. It'll stay put. Um, and it's kind of a do-it-yourself cheap solution. I love it. So you can get different presentations under an indie than you can with a pure tight line. And I use a bobber style as well, kind of when I have to, but I'll use the yarn as often as possible because of all the things that I'm gonna show you that the yarn can do. Now today, I mean, you can't fish this water. We were in flood stage yesterday. So we're not gonna fish, but I wanna show you some things on the water. We're gonna do things a little bit differently. My buddy Josh is behind the camera. You might even get him talking a little bit too. We'll head up to my place and I'll show you a few more things about how I you know, build out the yarn, uh, do that back at home. Are you ready? Here we go. So I fish streamers and dry flies as often as I can. But I always say nymphing is a sustainable approach, meaning you can catch fish on nymphs. I mean, everywhere where there's trout. And most days, it's kind of your best solution too. Well, until you have a hatch going on, until you ha really do have fish that are willing to eat a streamer or a dry. So I really enjoy tight lining, but again, you could just get different looks under an indie. There's already a video uh, on trout pitting with the Dorsey Yarn Indy, but I don't talk in it, I don't tell you anything about it, I just kind of show you how to make it and how to attach it. Um, there's also a full article on trout pitting called Everything You Need to Know About the Dorsey Yarn Indicator and a little more. I'll leave a link to that article below. And I call this the Dorsey, we've all called this the Dorsey in the trout pitting crew for a long time. Uh, we learned it from Pat Dorsey. You can get the full kit over at uh, the Blue Quill Angler, Dorsey's shop. I don't think you can find it anywhere else on the web. Again, it's kind of a do-it-yourself solution. It's easy to just grab these materials and you'll have them for a very long time. All right, so let's attach it. The yarn, I like to use two colors. And I pre-bunched this at my tying desk. I use this, uh, some dot thread, wrap it up. We'll show you this later. Um, so that kind of holds it together. I don't have a mess out here. I don't carry scissors with me on the water. I'm going to grab a piece of line, grab a piece of leader. This leader's 3X. It could be 3X, 4X. I don't like to mount this on 5X very often. I will not mount it on 6X. We're going to show you a couple different shots of this close up. But I'm taking this orthodontic rubber band. I wrap that on there. And now I'm going to put my yarn in. We'll show you some, some close ups. You need to wet this before you slide it up. And here we are. Now this, you're gonna see, this is gonna slide up, up the uh, leader and down the leader, whenever you want, but not when you don't want it to, right? So this is what it looks like. Okay. All right, now how we take it off, all you're doing is backing it off, pulling it out. The cool thing is it's not gonna damage the leader. That rubber band comes right off and there's no damage on that 3X or 4X. You could obviously mount it on 2X, 1X, however, you're, whatever you're normally gonna do. But don't put it on tip of this too light. Let's put it back on, show you some close-ups. So here's the rubber band, it's quarter inch, medium gauge. Now that's important too, because if you use a rubber band that's uh, too heavy or too big, it's not gonna cinch down to the yarn the way you need it to. So I'll grab a loop of line, that's the 3X, there's no twists in any of this. I'm opening up this rubber band and I'm taking that loop of line and I'm putting it in from behind, that's one. Put it back where it came from. Take it in from behind, that's two. Here's three, four, and five. That's all you need. Five's good, six is okay, seven's way too much, four's not enough. Grab this loop and you're gonna see here, there's no twists. There's no twists at all. You don't want it all wrapped up, well it won't be, all wrapped up and twisty. Now of course we're gonna put the yarn in that little loop. Just like that, cinch it up. Now before I cinch it up, I'm gonna wet this. Good, slide it up, and there you have it. Now you can also kinda <laughs> primp this with a little, a little bit of Velcro. You could put some paste on it. You could put some, uh, any kind of floating you want on it. I wouldn't put the powder on it, but any kind of gel or paste, you can put that on it. It's really not necessary. So this yarn will float for a very long time. You're gonna see this out here. Um, 
and it'll eject any water that it does collect on the back cast. So I only use the yarn that I really need to. It's rare that I'm gonna use more yarn than this. I'll often use half that much. Again, this is kind of how it's really versatile. I might pre-bunch these ahead of time, but then I'll just cut that thread and take out only as much yarn as I need. Um, the lighter it is, the more sensitive it's gonna be. That's one of the things that makes this uh, such, a, such a unique system. It weighs nothing. So let's look at this on the water. The material is hydrophobic, it can't, it can't hold water. But of course you can get some, some uh, water holding in between the fibers there. But again, with a good crisp back cast, it'll just eject that water and you kind of get a fresh look every time. So it's so light and it really, it doesn't affect the cast. A bobber, you can feel the weight of the bobber as you're making the cast, you can feel that. And you'll use that to affect. With this yarn, I often say you can cast right through it. That, having no weight is really what makes it so sensitive too. And it'll often be on the water and it'll just turn a little bit and you'll set the hook on that. Another thing is that the wings of the yarn, let's say when you put the uh, yarn on there, you can see it's kind of split a little bit and say it kind of has these wings. Often when it lands, when the dorsi lands, your, your nymph lands into the water and then your dorsi should land in behind it, hopefully in the same lane. That's another whole topic, but it'll often land this way on its side just a bit. And as soon as it feels the payload of either the nymph or the split shot, it'll right itself. That's another thing that it shows you that a bobber really just can't show you. All right, so let me show you one more time how we're just gonna take it off. Just this easy, it didn't damage the line. It slides up and down. I will say if, it's, if you try to slide it and it doesn't wanna slide just that easy, then something's wrong. Sometimes in the cast, you know, you'll accidentally throw a, throw a knot over it or you could blame it on the wind if you like. Anyway, just going to grab the yarn, back the rubber band down, take that yarn out, and slide the rubber band off. Again, no damage to the leader. It's pretty cool. All right, let's get out of here. Let's take a ride. Go up to my house and uh, show you a couple things about how I kind of put the Dorsey yarn indicator together at home. Hey, this video is sponsored by our good friends over at Squala. I've been working with Squala for a couple of years now and I really love their stuff. So I fish out here five days a week, whether I'm guiding or I'm just fishing for myself. And so much of the Squala stuff has just become part of my daily life. Uh, what I use out here every day, whether it's the waders, the raincoat. So the snap tee, for example, I wear this all the time down in Patagonia. Austin got tired of seeing me in it. My family gets tired of seeing me in the uh, Thermo 150. Wear that all the time. The Thermo 250, excellent layer. Wear this all the time. These are wool. Of course, I have the wool uh, Thermo 250 bottoms on. I wear them as my base layer or my layer under the waders all the time. Sole Tactical hoodie. I bet I have 200 days on this. It's just fantastic. I love it. Uh, the 32 Fusion puffy jacket, wear that all the time. It's just, all these things have become, a, become part of my life, I guess, you know? So for a limited time, Squala is offering a discount code of 10% for you trout pit and regulars. Uh, go to squalafishing.com and use that code. Thanks to Squala for their support of the trout pit and project, and thanks to you too. Hey, let's take a ride. Let's go up to my house. Josh, you coming? Here we go. So I grew into fly fishing, of course, with the dry fly. You did too, right? Yes, yeah. And then when did you start nymphing? It, it was early. It was early that I started nymphing, but it was always under a bobber. Mm. And uh, No yarn. No yarn. Seriously, no. bobber. Yeah. yeah, just a bobber. So I started on a tight line. Mm. And then, well, when I started hanging out with Pat, I was like, man. Burke. Yeah, Pat Burke. I needed, I realized right away, well, because we started fishing from a boat. He bought a boat, we started traveling and fishing from a boat. And I realized if I wanted to nymph, usually we wanted to fish streamers, but sometimes that wouldn't work. But if I really wanted to nymph, I needed an indie. And I needed to be move, able to move that indie sure. up and down quickly, because a boat keeps moving and you don't have time to bring it in and fiddle around with your uh, depth. You don't have time. So I needed something quickly slidable. 
explored a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. And that's when I found the Dorsey, kind of been using it ever since. Realized, besides how quickly and easily it slides, I realized all the other benefits to it. That yeah. Talking about. Yeah, and, and the way that you rig up the Dorsey, you can do in a similar way with a, with a bobber or something, but but it doesn't have all the strengths that a Dorsey has in terms of the weight. I think the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is just how heavy even the smallest like thingamabobbers or airlocks are. Mm -hmm. like, they're a lot heavier than you think they are. That's true. I mean, they're 60 centigrams, something like that, right. you know, right. at the minimum. And, and that's uh, what you cast. Exactly. Right, yeah. you are casting that weight. And it is what it is. We'll use it for effect. I'll use the bobber style to help everything travel out there to, to use that weight like yeah. a bobber. Windy days sometimes, yeah. yeah. I'll show you the, the hack later. You've seen the hack, the Dorsey hack, right? Yeah. With, yeah. The, with yeah. the split shot? Yep. We'll show them then. Yep. All right, here we go. Okay, come on. Hi, right, buddy. <laughs> Hang he's up. All right, let's look at this. Um, the yarn hmm, is Bonnie Braid, six millimeter. Again, you, if you buy a whole, what's it called, a skein of it, you'll have it the rest of your life. Hey, you want a beer? Yeah. Let's share a beer? Let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. It's uh, what, 10.30 in the morning? Might be almost 11 now. All right, so we'll share one. Hey now. A little early for me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a river runs through it quote. I used to bunch these up I'm gonna pre-bunch these. That's what, we're, that's what we're gonna do here. Show you how I do this. I used to kind of count the strands. I, I, I had five, seven, and three strand Dorsey's already pre-packaged in my vest. Now I kind of have them all be five strand and then I'll add or take away from those pre-bunched pieces. And uh, we'll give you a couple different looks at how we put this together. So I cut that, I just took a couple pieces out. I do really like to use two colors. Just on the water, you see it better. Um, you can really see the nuances then of that of that yarn turn, and you can see when it's turning because there's a couple different colors in it. So that's enough. I pulled out two strands of the yellow, and I have let's go three strands of the green. Now, so I'm going to take and just comb this out. Again, you can do all of this on the water, but I don't want to take I don't want to take scissors and a comb or a piece of Velcro works too, but I don't want to take any of that on the river with me. I've found over the years that this is just easier. And then I have these in my vest to keep them in a little bag. So I brushed out the green, I brushed out the yellow, and I put it together. All right. This is 8 aught, 8 aught thread. I wouldn't use it thicker. It could possibly go thinner. I'm just gonna bunch this in the center about three wraps there. Take my tag, put it on the other side. Three wraps on the other. Get my hat. Cut my tag. And now that's enough. Now seriously, everything is together in the middle. Now the trick here is to just throw a couple half hitches to hold it. That's one. Slide that in. Good. A couple half hitches. There's two. Yep. This is actually shown uh, really well in the other video. Okay, so it's all pre-bunched now. And then I like it to be about an inch long, three quarters of an inch long. That's it, right there. Again, you can kinda, once, once it's together, you could fluff it up with something, fair enough. There's one more, one more step, one more thing I do here is I'm gonna take every piece, I, I usually make four or five of these, maybe a dozen of these at once, and then I take them all at once and I put some Rain-X on them, which just kind of waterproofs things even more. So 
These are quarter inch medium gauge rubber bands. You can get them on eBay, on Amazon. You can't just grab your, uh, your daughter's <laughs> rubber bands for her braces and expect it to work, unless it's quarter inch medium gauge orthodontic elastics. Um, it really does, I said this down on the river, really does need to be the right, uh, the right size. So let's use a colored line here that we can really see to attach. This is thicker than I would normally attach it to. So I'm gonna grab a loop of line, open up this rubber band, take the loop and put it in from behind. That's one, two, three, four, five. And again, there's no twists in it. Put, it, put the yarn in, wet it before you cinch it down, good. And then you pull, this part is important right here. If I just put it on right there, like that's not, that's not enough. If I, when I pull it like that, I can feel it kind of twist into place, cinch down for real. And now again, it's gonna slide when I want it to, like that, slide up, slide down, but it'll hold its place and it won't slide when I don't want it to. You could paste it up or not. Again, it already has the rain axe on it. It's good, love it. See you when. Action. Action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. There you go. There's another Dorsey for your collection. Thank you. You can take oh, a fish hand. So really people good. are going to ask about the New Zealand yarn indicator with the little tube. You ever use that? Yep. Yeah. What Not, do you think? Truthfully, I didn't use it all that much. I didn't love it. Yeah. Um, part of it was the inconvenience because of the tool. Yeah, yeah. You, you have, have to, to have the tool and the tubes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so there's the tubes and there's only two sizes of those. Yeah. And so you, you, you don't get as much customization of it because of that. Sure. The other thing is it's wool. And we talk a lot about wool and we love wool, hmm. but in our indicators, this poly material is, is a, it, it just doesn't hold water as much. Right. And so it stays buoyant a little bit longer and, and you need a smaller surface area for one of these to, to hold up a similar amount of weight because of that. I'd say the New Zealand is almost the same performance, but the yeah. sort of inconveniences of it and uh, not being not quite as versatile is uh, why I choose, well, yeah, I like the Dorsey better. Yeah. You feel like it's the same performance even, even almost. with how long you can keep it on? Yeah, mm. almost. But again, this is more adjustable and you can put, yeah, so more or less yarn. Uh, the other thing we should cover is that Dorsey yarn indicator hack. Uh, the split shot. <laughs> I've never seen anybody else do this. It seems a little crazy. What I do is take uh, a small split shot, like a number eight or a number six, and I put it above, mount it above where the Dorsey is. Um, so just briefly, I mean, there's a reason why sometimes we use a bobber, you know, a, a, mm. an airlock or a thingamabobber. And that reason is often because it has weight. Well, this has no weight. And every once in a while, I want it to have a little bit, bit of weight, maybe to punch through the wind a little bit, uh, to aid in the cast, to help the cast. I especially will do it on a tight line system. And I, need, I know you do that. You put this on a tight line system and yeah. sometimes you need that extra little punch again through the wind or if you have a light fly behind that, it, it all you're doing then is taking a little split shot, mounting it above, and that gives it just the smallest amount of weight to help it. And you'd think, oh no, it's gonna uh, sink the yarn, but it doesn't. You ever do it? Yes, yeah. Have you? I thought you'd say no. I have done it only since, uh, <laughs> only since we last talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not common. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And had you, had you asked me, had you asked me two weeks ago if I'd done it, I would have said no. <laughs> <laughs> Most people haven't. Yeah. So anyway, uh, put the Dorsey on, give it a shot. The only way you're gonna really understand all the things we talked about, all the advantages of it, is to uh, tie a couple up and uh, fish with it. So get out there and fish hard, friends. Have fun. Trout bitten out. Trout bitten out. <laughs>